Changes are coming to the AZ500 exam on January 27th, 2021. So if you have your sights set on this exam, you need to know what's changed and how you're gonna prepare. In this short video, I'm going to show you what's new, how it impacts your existing prep, and where you'll find the material to prepare for these new skills measured so you'll be ready come exam day. Now I did say short video, so let's get right to it. So one of the first questions I expect may come to mind is what if I've already started preparing for AZ500? And the good news here is your existing prep work is 100% valid because no skills measured have been removed from the list, only skills have been added. And when we look at the objective domains in AZ500, there are four of them and the changes come in two areas. They come in domains two and four, which are implement platform protection and secure data and applications. I wanna start with domain four because this is where the bulk of the changes come into play. You have three new skills measured here, which are configure Azure Defender for storage, configure Azure Defender for SQL, and configure Azure Defender for Key Vault. And what we're seeing here, at least in part, are some of the effects of the rebranding around Microsoft Defender that was announced at, at the Ignite conference in September 2020. So under Microsoft Defender, you have two experiences there. You have Azure Defender and you have Microsoft 365 Defender. And you may ask yourself, what's the difference? Well, in the AZ500 context, it's simply this. Microsoft 365 Defender focuses on email, client endpoints, identity, and apps. Not at all what's being tested by and large on AZ500. Now with Azure Defender, uh, that covers server endpoints, containers, networks, managed apps, SQL Server, storage, very much items in scope on the AZ500 exam. So for AZ500, it's really more on Azure Defender uh, that you'll want to put your focus. Now, I just want to unpack some details with you here that may prove important on the exam. So when we think about those branding changes, uh, you know, Azure Security Center standard, for example, is now referred to as Azure Defender for servers. Uh, and then you'll see Azure Defender for Kubernetes uh, referenced. Now, I didn't mention that Azure Defender for Kubernetes was a skill measured, but what have I said about AZ500 previously? Well, that's that it's not an exhaustive list in those skills measured. So you may see some curveballs related to uh, what is in that list of skills measured. So very much that's going to be in scope. Azure Defender for IoT, Advanced Threat Protection for SQL, now referred to as Azure Defender for SQL. So that's a bit of rebranding, so to speak, because you'll find that when you go to the Azure portal, to the UI, uh, that the functionality is the same. Azure Threat Protection for SQL now just appears as Azure Defender for SQL. And the functionality is evolving, but let's not split hairs for our purposes here. So if we look at the full breadth of Azure Defender features that show up in the documentation now, we have Azure Defender for servers, for Kubernetes, for resource manager, for storage, for DNS, for SQL, and for IoT. And these logos are not official, I'm just giving you some anchors here so you can get this locked into your brain as you prep for the exam. So let's talk about the changes coming in Domain two, which is implement platform protection. You see only one item here, and that is implement Azure Firewall Manager. And I find many people haven't even heard of Azure Firewall Manager yet, and you may find yourself amongst them. So Azure Firewall Manager gives us central security policy and route management capability for our security parameters as they exist in Azure anyway. So let's recap and get you onto where you'll find the material to prepare. So domain two, we have implement Azure Firewall Manager and in domain four, we have configuring Azure Defender for storage, SQL, and Key Vault, those three new line items. And notice the verbs in these skills measured, implement and configure. This implies deep hands-on knowledge, pretty standard for associate level Microsoft exams. Now I mentioned that these don't show up in the MS Learn content. So what I've done is I've updated my ultimate exam prep guide for AZ500. You can get it at the link in the video description. It doesn't require a login. You click get it now, you get the guide and a story. I have links to the right 
reading and tutorials you're going to need to make sure you're ready for those additional line items come exam day. And then uh, you also have a short video on how to prepare for the AZ500 exam. If you give me five more minutes, look at this video. I cover the guides, the hands-on material you need, where to find free prep questions. It's all about making sure you get in there and get further faster as you're preparing for this exam. And make sure you check out my AZ500 exam cram series and my AZ500 practice exam questions and get the link for the exam prep guide out of the video description. And there you have it. If this helped, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell. And in the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.